NAT instances to provide internet access to your private instances. That's what we are going to look at now. So let us uh, take a simple scenario here that uh, shown here. There are there is a uh, big PPC there, which is a 10.81.0016 that gives you the entire range. And then inside that, there are two availability zones, one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. And each of those availability zones, we have two subnets, that is one public subnet and one private subnet and if you can notice here the public subnets are having the one dot series it is by design i have made it like that they have one series that is an odd number series no other than saying one series the public ones are having an odd number series one three and if i have another availability zone i would rather create it 10.81.5.0 it is a more logical organization you can create it in any way you want but it makes it easier for me to understand when I'm looking at the IP address, I can tell you this IP address is coming from this availability zone and this is from this public subnet. So that is all it has to do it. And you also have a private subnet uh, here. So that is your private subnets having the even series of IPs, 10.81.4. blah, blah, blah. That is the third octet that I'm talking about this number. That number is uh, even number in the private series. And I also have a security group for my database and I also have a web security group for my web layer that is port 80 will be allowed here, port 22 will be allowed here. Whereas when it comes to data, database security group, only my web security group can access it. But it, this database security group doesn't have any direct internet access. So to provide internet access in case to administer it or to copy it, what I do, what I need to do is I'm going to start something like this. This is nothing but a NAT instance. And I'm going to send all the internet based traffic that is coming from my DB security group. I'm going to create an, a route and that route is going to send all the internet based traffic to my NAT instance. And this NAT instance will have an elastic IP. So this using this elastic IP, I can publicly connect to the a NAT instance and the NAT instance in turn will forward the tra uh, net internet traffic back to the database security group. So this way the world or the internet will not know what are the IPs that is hidden behind my NAT instance and all the instances that is inside this database will be going out through this particular IP addresses. So my IPs for my database, my IPs for any other private instances are all hidden behind a particular elastic IP. I'm not exactly this one. I mean to say this one. The elastic IP will be assigned by this tiny arrow mark that you see here. That is the icon for elastic IP, this one. So when you assign an elastic IP to a NAT instance, you will get a public IP address. And that public IP address is what uh, the external world will see when I'm connecting to my uh, outside world from my private security instance. So there is a, let us see a more pictorial way of how this all is set up. So I have just simplified the imagery a little bit so that we can easily follow what is going to happen here. So the, there are there is one private on the left hand side and there is one public on the right hand side. And the public, as you can notice, the router is already configured with the uh, internet gateway that is the 0, 0.0 address is mentioned. So that any traffic originating for the internet will be sent to my internet gateway and uh, I mean to my router and my router will send it to my internet gateway and my internet gateway will send it to my uh, internet cloud itself. So whereas for these guys who are sitting in the private subnet, there is, yeah, uh, yeah some, sometimes uh, you can call this as a masking, net, IP masking, uh, net masking, or I mean not net masking exactly, IP masking you can say, so that uh, the world doesn't know what is your private instance IP addresses. So coming back to the left hand side group of instances, these guys doesn't have anywhere to send their internet bound traffic. They just have the internal router that is built in default provided by Amazon by the VPC configuration. So the first thing to configure a NAT gateway is you do is you create a route. I mean, not exactly a route table. You need to point the internet bound traffic somewhere. So the next step is you create a NAT gateway in your public subnet. You can see here the NAT gateway is sitting inside my public subnet. And then next step is what I do is I assign an elastic IP. 
So the IP address shown here is not necessarily has to be the same. It will be uh, different. The time that I was trying to do that, I got this IP address, so I put it here. So it might be different to you. So now we have a NAT gateway and then our uh, Elastic IP. So next thing is to do is add a route table uh, so that all the internet based traffic that you can see here is forwarded to my NAT instance. That is my target has to be NAT instance. And there is one more check we need to do. That is a source and destination checks. Uh, that is nothing but every traffic in Amazon VPC has to be for the source and the destination is checked valid but NAT is kind of a forwarder here so if you start doing a source and uh, destination check for each packet the forwarder will not work so we will have to disable the source and destination checks for our NAT instance when you are creating it and then what happens is all these private instances on the left hand side will be able to talk to the internet through the NAT gateway so this is the demo that we are going to do right now and quickly to just to see a summary of it. So we are going to set up a custom VPC and have a security group of firewalls in place and then we are going to set up a NAT gateway and add the NAT gateway to public subnet as an elastic IP start a private instance and ping uh, uh, yesterday or somebody was asking me how to uh, do a ping so today we will enable ICMP or ping in the security group So we will take it as an example of uh, we'll start pinging to the internet It should be initially failing as soon as we connect our NAT gateway and we set up the internet route to the NAT gateway uh, This ping should start working. So that's what we are going to see as a demo today Let's go ahead and go to our console right away